Well, the pavers, the yard, the driveway, they're all looking pretty good. Today, I get to start something else. I've got my tools, welder, because I'm going to be going out there to the shed today and building the, the big garage door. It's a big bifold door. It got power there from the side of the house. I dug a trench. You can see all the soil has been disturbed. And uh, power lines in. I've got some basic power points in there. I can start working. Okay, so behind me is a 40 by 40 shed. And that door opening is 14 feet high by 14 feet wide. I'm going to make a bifold door. Uh, the top two feet of this opening is going to be part of the wedge. That's not normally the, that's not the way I built my first two doors. But uh, in this case, it just made sense. So I'm actually going to attach the hinge to the very header on this door opening. These are the hinges, four inch by four inch. They're roughly uh, 3 16 thick metal, really heavy duty. And now to make the hinge, let's call this the door. This is the part coming down covering the header. Well, that's the easiest way to do that. Just lay the hinge in there and it hinges, right? Well, that doesn't work because this would interfere. Every part there's a raised corrugation, it would, it, it doesn't work. I'd have to have a relief here, I'd have to cut it back or something, but it's got a hinge up. Well, that means I've got to have the hinge out here. So how do I accomplish that? It's a big gap now. I can't have the middle a nice finish. Um, well, the way I accomplish that is I could use angle iron, but I don't want to buy anything because that's the way I am. But I have a bunch of this scrap, at least enough of this scrap I-beam, which is part of the structure that they made the shed out of. I'm just going to cut a piece here. Four inches wide. Okay, why am I doing that? I'll cut this part off here. Why am I doing that? Well, what's that's going to happen is I'll weld this onto the back of that, and that gives me an angle iron. Now that I've got these hinges made, I know what the dimension is. The back of this, which is going to be the front of the uh, front of the header, at the top to the middle pin, middle of this pin. And what I have to go is measure from this pivot point to the middle pivot point, and that's the top panel, and then the middle pivot point to the bottom roller. It's going to be a bearing something like this one. And that's going to ride up in a piece of metal, a, a race that's on the inside of the door, uh, inside of the four inch beam there. The inner hinge point is also going to be on the inside of the door, but it's not going to be as far out as this wheel. And this, however, is going to be on the outside. That's going to be on the outside of the door. So uh, I've tried to work this out mathematically on a spreadsheet. I'm just not smart enough. So I'm gonna to have to lay this out on, a, on the ground behind me probably, draw some lines, and figure out the length of the top panel and the length of the bottom panel 
and, and ultimately where the bottom roller is going to be. And this is all to get the wedge. If I were a boat builder, this would be similar to lofting. But in, a lo in the case of a lofting, an engineer drew up a plan, put down some measurements, and then the uh, boat builder goes ahead and lays them out on the loft, on the floor. And from that he gets the sizes of his, all the things he's building. This is a much simpler thing, and it's kind of reverse engineering, where I don't have any engineering drawings. All I have are their measurements of a door opening, and what I'd like to see as far as uh, a bifold door. So here's what I wound up with. Here is everything I was able to figure out by doing this lofting, if you want to call it that. But the important things were, I needed to know how long that upper piece was to that middle pivot point and how far the middle pivot point was to this lower pivot point. The lower pivot point to the middle pivot point, 85 and 5 eighths inches. The middle pivot point to the top pivot point, 78 and a quarter inches. And that gave me this strong wedge that's equidistant from the outside wall. That's the same length from that corner to that middle pivot as it is from that middle pivot to where it crosses right here. That's equal and that makes it a strong wedge. The center of that bearing to where it crosses the outer wall is five and a half inches. So that meant that the bottom panel is actually much longer because the bottom of the door actually goes down to the floor and that's about five, five inches. Well, I wish the light was better, but uh, this is as good as it gets until I get some lights in here. Right now, I've just got basic power points. What I've got behind me are the two, the top and bottom uh, rails for the top panel, as well as sitting over there on the mud guard. There are the two side pieces. And so I'll be uh, endeavoring to weld all those together in some sort of square fashion. And I'm aiming for about between a quarter and three-eighths of an inch gap on the sides. Uh, the top will just be whatever it winds up being. But uh, I'm trying to leave enough room just for a seal, and I reckon that's between three-eighths, about three-eighths of an inch, top and bottom uh, on the top panel. And the bottom panel will have, you know, it doesn't really matter how long I make that, but I'm going to try to use a standard garage door seal on the bottom there. And those, I think, can fill like a three-quarter inch gap right down to probably a quarter inch. So that's uh, where we're starting. Let's see how we go. This is the upper panel, so I'm just test fitting it here. Now, okay, the door isn't, it's not exactly square, and if you put it on the other side, 
I've got the weld down here so I can't stick it right up against, but it's pretty darn good. So, uh, the thing is, the gap here isn't perfect either. And I think a part of that is because, look at the spacers I've got. So the floor isn't, fl uh, isn't flat, or at least it isn't uh, level. But that looks pretty good. The gap looks pretty good. It's good enough. And this is the upper panel in any case, so that's going to be mounted up there. And I've got to figure out how to get this. I don't know, it's 150, 200 pounds. I'm going to get that up there. I could have a bunch of friends over, but yeah, I don't have any of them. But I do have a tractor. So I uh, will probably rig up something on that tractor to uh, hoist it up there, maybe an A-frame, something. And then hold it in place while I bolt the hinges in. I've got the upper panel frame fleshed out. There's going to be other structure there. I just don't want to make it really heavy because I've got to get it up there somehow. So I'll, uh, I'll add the bracing and stuff later when it's actually up there. What I'll do today though is I'll put this frame into the trailer and I'll start making the bottom frame. Uh, the reason I'm putting that in the trailer is uh, they're coming out on, in a couple of days to spray foam insulate the roof, the ceiling. So I've got to have the floor space kind of cleared out, pull the trailer out. Uh, anyway, that's my day.